Hello, and in this video we're going to talk about inverse functions. So we're going to define what an inverse function is. We're going to look at compositions of functions to see if they're inverses of one another by getting the same input value out. So if they get the original input value, then they're inverses. We'll do a test of that. We're going to take a look at these three things together, which is not every function has an inverse. You might have to restrict the domain to make it one-to-one. -one. In order to have an inverse, it has to be one-to-one, -one, meaning that it has to pass the horizontal line test if it's a graph. So let's start off with the first thing here, defining what an inverse function is. So if a function is defined where we put an input value in and we get an output value, the inverse function is defined as where we put the output value in and get the input value. So we're really switching the x and the y value. Now the inverse function is written with this little negative 1 notation. Instead of just saying g of x, we're going to say the inverse of f. And it's just going to take the place of g. So it represents the inverse. Now, as I said here in red, we switch the x and y to find the inverse. Okay. So we're going to answer some questions about functions. Um, let's start off with looking at this graph and finding some values from this graph. So this is not the inverse, we're just evaluating 1. So we look at 1 here, go up, we find the, the y value. This is just 1 as well, so this is the value that we found when we found f of 1. Now the inverse reverses this, we're going to go up, uh, this is a y value. So we're going to take the y value of 3, which is right here, we're going to read across to the graph where it is, and it looks like it comes down to there, and that's 9, so this value is 9. This is asking when the function is equal to 2, so it's asking the same thing as this one, really, in a different way, but it's asking the same function, so we're going to go to 2, because f of x is y, this is y equals 2, so the y is 2, that means the x is 4 on this one. So we're finding the x value when we know y is 2. Here's the same thing, we're finding the x value when y is 3. So these are very similar. Now these are very similar. We're looking at when we plug in 5, what is our answer? So if we know this is 5, that's going to give it an estimate. So we know that's the square root. So x has to be the square root of 5 here because we know the function is the square root here. If not, we would estimate that value. But since we know the function is the square root of 5, so basically if you take the inverse of the square root of 5 here, you come back down to 5. So that's reading the graph either from x up or from y to x, if you're finding the inverse. Okay, if we just have a, a second example that says here's our function value, and we're trying to find the inverse. Basically, we're asking, this is asking for the x value that gave us this y, so the answer is 3 here. Now, when they use two inverse functions here, we really undo each other. The inverse of a function is just going to give you the function value back. We're going to get the value we put in. Okay, so if we're doing inverse, we're reversing the x and the y as our values. The inverse is always a y value. So this is saying when is the y value 2, what is the x value? Alright, so we're going to go down to a table and do the same thing. Table, 4 is 5, so we're reading it normally. Here we're solving when the table equals 0, what is the x value? That's going to be 5. This is really talking about the inverse here. The inverse of 1, we have that right here. We're reading backwards, that's 3. And this one is the inverse of the inverse, so we're reading that one forward to 3, so x is 3 here. Also, so these two read from x to y, and these two read from y up to the x value. Okay. Now, to find an inverse function, we have to follow these steps. 
we replace the function notation with y, we switch x and y, that gives us the actual inverse. We solve for y, and then we rewrite it with function notation. I'm going to do that with this example right here. We're going to follow these steps. We're going to find the inverse of this function. So the first step is to replace this with y. Okay, and the second step is to interchange x and y, or exchange them. Okay, third step is to take this and solve for y. So we're going to solve it for y. So first step in solving for y here is to subtract 5 from both sides. So it's going to be x minus 5 equals negative 2y. And then we're going to divide by negative 2 to finish off the third step. So we're going to get x minus 5 divided by negative 2 equals y. So we've solved for y. Now, I don't like having a negative sign in the front, so right here. So I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by negative 1. When we do that, this value is 1. It doesn't change the answer. It just show, changes what it looks like. This is now going to be 5 on the bottom. And we're going to get negative x plus 5 on the top. So that is my solving my solution right here. Last step is to write that with function notation. So we go back up here, look at what function notation was. It was f of x. So we're going to write f inverse of x equals negative x plus 5 over 5. And that's our answer. So that's the fourth step, is to write it in inverse notation. So these are the four steps when solving function of putting it, finding its inverse. Okay, if we have two functions and we want to check to see if they're inverses of one another, what we do is we do actually do a composite. f of g of x and g of f of x, they're going to give us the original value back. x, because we put x in, we should get x out. If we do that and we get the same values, then we'll have an inverse. So what they'll do is ask you to find those values given two functions. And if you get x both times, your description of the relationship is to say that these are inverse functions. If they don't, then you'd say they're not inverse functions. So let's do this problem. This is a little complicated because they're fractional. So we're going to take f of x and we're going to plug it into g. So we're going to do g of f of x first. So let's we're doing the second one first. We're going to take this f of x and we're going to plug it in there. So we're going to get x and x plus 1 on the top and then 1 minus x and x plus 1 on the bottom. So that's that one. We have to simplify this. So I'm looking at the common denominator here. It looks like that's x plus 1, so I'm going to multiply the top by x plus 1 and the bottom by x plus 1. All right, that's uh, since they're fractions, they're really over 1 when we're multiplying, because we're multiplying a fraction, crosses out this piece, and we get x on the top. On the bottom, these two reduce, so we're going to get minus x down here for the second one, but then we're this also gets multiplied by 1 here. We have to distribute it. So that's going to be 1 times this, which is x plus 1. Then we're going to have minus x. So the x's drop out. We're going to get x over 1, which is x. So right now, it looks like it may be an inverse, because when we did this function, we got x. Let's try the other one. Um, this is where we're going to take g of x, and we're going to plug it in. So we're going to go f of g of x. All right, so we're taking g, that's this function, and we're putting it in here. So we're going to take the x over 1 minus x and put that on top. And then we're going to put that x over 1 minus x here. And then that's going to add 1. Again, we're going to multiply by common denominator, in this case 1 minus x. 
the top and the bottom so that we can reduce that part out because it's common here and common here so it reduces out here and we're going to get X on the top on the bottom it reduces out here and we get X and then this gets multiplied by this so we're going to have 1 minus X again we're going to get X over these two drop out 1 so basically F of X and G of X are inverses because they gave me X each time. Now if we had not gotten X then we just say they're not inverses. Okay so that's second here. Now the last thing here is to talk about whether they have an inverse. So to have an inverse you must pass the horizontal line test and the y value has to be distinct. So this function right here, which is f of x equals x squared, is not one to one. It's not one to one, so it, it doesn't pass the horizontal line test. If we drew a horizontal line, here's a horizontal line, crosses twice, doesn't pass the horizontal line test. So what we have to do is we have to restrict the domain. Now what's going to happen is we're going to want to restrict the domain from where it starts to repeat itself. So if we look at this, it goes down and then it goes back up. So horizontal line, we would want to cut it right here off of the domain. We'd want this side or this side. Usually they want the side that increases, so we're going to pick the right side here for the piece. So we're going to say that we're going to restrict the domain to um, 0 to infinity so that we have no, we can include 0, 0 to infinity will be our domain here. We're just going to look at just this piece right here. We just look at that piece this horizontal line only crosses once because this is no longer part of the graph we've cut it off and anytime we draw another red line it's only going to cross once so we've restricted our domain enough so it to, to be one to one and now we would then to find the inverse we go back and um, look at the same function and we do that step so the first step is y equals x squared we replace x with y and y with x we'd solve for y so when we do that we get this and we get plus or minus but we restricted the domain to this so that means this piece right here would not be included in our graph we would not include the minus we'd only want the plus side because our domain is that now if we were graphing the inverse we'd switch the variables so the inverse graph would look like zero zero switches to zero zero okay one one switches to one one but when we're here at at two four when we switch to four we get 4, 2, so we'd end up over here on the inverse. 4, 2. So the inverse is going this way. It's actually the square root graph. And it's a, a mirror across the line y equals x. y equals x goes right through 45 degrees here, like this. And it would be a mirror image of that on either side of that line. This is y equals x y equals x, it would be the inverses are mirror images of each other. It's a reflection on y equals x. Okay, and that's what I put down here. Also, that it's inverse. It does that. Now, graphing the inverse is usually pretty easy. Once you have a, a graph, you just switch the x and the y and make a new graph.
from that switching point. So from graphing purposes, graphing an inverse is pretty easy because we just have to find coordinates and switch coordinates. But you have to be one to one and it has to be um, if you can't make it one to one or if you can't be one to one, you can make it one to one by cutting the graph on the increasing part, not the decreasing part, the increasing part that's positive. Okay. So that is all about inverses and inverse functions.